Uh, Ambassador Thomas Knights, thank you for joining us on I-24 News. Thank you for having me. Uh, let me begin by noting this is, of course, the anniversary of the uh, move of the U.S. Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Uh, at the time, there were those who, some who questioned the wisdom of that move. Uh, there were still some who questioned it. Looking back now, uh, was it the right thing for the U.S. to do? Sure, absolutely. The capital of uh, Israel is Jerusalem, uh, and that's where the embassy is, and that's where I live. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the state of U.S. relations with Israel, also between this administration and this current government. How do you see that? I, I, think, I think the relationships are, is very strong. As you know, President Biden has made it very clear. It's an unbreakable tie between the United States and Israel, uh, and I think that relationship is quite strong. We are friends. We are we're colleagues. We, are, uh, uh, we work together on everything around security and culture and society. This is what what the relationship with Israel United is all about. It's a, it's a friendship, it's a relationship, uh, and it's historic on the 70th anniversary of the State of Israel. Right. Now, uh, friends have differences sometimes. Uh, one of the issues uh, uh, the, uh, that has been a sort of difference between the administration and this current government is the judicial reforms that it has been pursuing. There are those uh, here who question whether the U.S. should be involving itself in what met some people here see as an internal domestic issue. How do you respond to that? Uh, I've heard that. Um, <laughs> as I like to say that uh, uh, friends are friends and what, what about friendship is you tell friends uh, when you think uh, you give them advice and counsel. We can't tell Israel what to do. But as the president articulated to the prime minister and public, and I have as well, we we're hoping to, for them to build consensus. And by the way, that's what the that's what the prime minister is trying to do with uh, President Herzog, who is convening uh, both those who are on the left and the right to talk about these issues. And I think that's really important. And so my view of this is democracy is alive and well in Israel. And it's taking place every day. All right. You don't take it personally when an Israeli minister publicly tells you to mind your own business. <laughs> if I took everything people say personally, this wouldn't be happening. As fun as it is, listen. I, I I care deeply about this place. I care deeply, passionately about this place. And and when I believe um, I'm articulating something that's in the best interest of Israel. I try to do my best. Since I've been here, I try to do the best I can. That obviously doesn't make everyone happy, but I try to get along. I try to do the right thing. I try to say the right thing. And uh, again, that's what friends do. All right. Well, clearly there are some issues that President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu have to discuss, perhaps face to face. Uh, when is the Prime Minister going to get an invitation to the White House? I, as the President has said, um, he, he gets to do the invitations. Uh, the White House, will, I'm sure he will come at some point, uh, and those invitations will come from the White House. House. Okay. Uh, let's talk about uh, this uh, recent Gaza operation that just ended. Uh, certainly one of the things that the uh, U.S. administration, this administration would like to do is at the very least help manage the conflict uh, between Israel and the Palestinians, if not in some ways advance it towards the peace process. What, uh, what could the administration be doing to help in that process and where does it see that it could be going? Well, first of all, it's very important for us to step back. Um, uh, the U.S. Um, obviously supports Israel's right to defend itself, uh, in which we articulated during the last uh, seven days of the rocket fire. No country, no country should have 860-some rockets fired into them. Regardless of what happens, that's just not tolerable. So we obviously support Israel's right to defend itself, and obviously uh, we were very involved in uh, making sure there was a ceasefire, which occurred, and we hope it sticks. Uh, my, our view is very simple. Um, we advocate for uh, a two-state solution. We've talked about that forever. In the meantime, since I don't think that's coming anytime soon, the American's position is to help the Palestinian people. The, the, the men and women who live in the West Bank and Gaza who wake up every day and want the same thing uh, that most uh, Jews and Arabs who live in Israel, which is a job, an opportunity, education, health care. That's where we're spending our time. We're trying to create coexistence and trying to create the help uh, for those people. Nothing more and nothing less. All right. But 
what do you think uh, the Israeli government uh, could be doing to help in that process? Again, I think more work permits, which they have done in the West Bank and Gaza. One of the one of the things I think came clear in this most recent exercise is that Hamas, for a variety of reasons, did not engage. One of the reasons some some suggest is because the uh, ability of work permits and the ability for them to have the opportunity of the Gazans to have the opportunity uh, to work in Israel was one part of that. Um, I just think we need to continue uh, helping the Palestinians. That's why I've spent time since I've been here on getting uh, 4G, uh, opening the LMB Bridge, working on the East Jerusalem hospitals, trying to get to some things like the Janine Power Plant. We're trying to do practical things to help the Palestinian people. And I think to the Prime Minister's credit, uh, understands economics is important, and obviously more economics is better than less. Okay. Yeah, well, to get back to the American embassy for a minute, there were those who, when, when the move was made, who felt that it, perhaps it should have been accompanied by a gesture to the Palestinians, uh, such as reopening the uh, U.S. consulate in East Jerusalem. I know the administration looked into that and maybe has a desire to do, do that. Uh, are we going to see uh, any movement on that from the U.S. side? Do you have discussions with the current uh, Netanyahu government on that issue? The same conversation I had with uh, Prime Minister Bennett, and then I had with Prime Minister Lapid, and then I had with Prime Minister Netanyahu. I've had three prime ministers since I've been here for uh, less than two years. Uh, we want to open the consulate. We've said we wanted to open the consulate. We'll continue to push to open the consulate. Okay, uh, but so far you haven't gotten any, made any progress in that We'll keep area. pushing. Okay. Uh, I want to move now to a, another subject that's been a source of some disagreement, but maybe now perhaps coming to some kind of agreement, the, Ira the Iranian issue. Uh, is the U.S. and uh, Israel more or less now on the same page when it comes to the Iranian nuclear problem and how to deal with it? Yeah, we, we, have, we have meetings every day on this. Uh, there's clear that the, the, uh, the Netanyahu administration understands the position of the Biden administration, which is we, are, we stand to support the state of Israel. We're going to make sure collectively that um, Iran does not obtain a nuclear weapon. It's a position that this administration has said over and over again. Obviously, would we like to have a diplomatic solution? Of course we would. In the meantime, we're working collectively with the Israelis to make sure we secure the state of Israel and we make sure that Iran does not obtain a nuclear weapon. There are those in Israel, some who would like to see uh, the administration, the U.S., let's say, demonstrate in some way uh, that there is a credible military threat against Iran if they achieve or come close to nuclear weapons capability. Uh, is there something the U.S. is doing to, to in order to uh, create that uh, impression? Is there something more it could be doing? I think uh, I think it's uh, actions speak louder than words. Uh, I'll let their actions speak uh, those for those those who are thinking. Uh, uh, we work collectively with Israel every day. The one of the biggest surprises I had when coming here is how close the uh, IDF is with our defense ministry and our intelligence agencies with our intelligence. We work every day collectively and work to make sure and deter Iran for obtaining a nuclear weapon. All right. We've seen, I want to move to the uh, Abraham Accords, but uh, Iran is a factor of that too, and the Saudis too. Uh, we recently saw Saudi Arabia reestablish uh, relations with Iran. It's raised some concerns in Israel about extending uh, the Abraham Abraham Accords to countries like Saudi Arabia. Is there more the administration uh, could be doing to uh, help uh, extend the Abraham Accords? Yeah, sure. We listen. This, uh, when I my first moment that I got here two years ago, I talked about the importance of the Abraham Accords. I gave credit to the former administration for the work they did on it. Uh, it's the importance. I work every day with the Bahrainians, the Moroccans, the Emiratis, as well as the Egyptians uh, and the Jordanians about the improvement of our relationship between our two countries uh, or the countries between Israel and those countries as well as us. Without question, we would like to see, if it's possible, a normalization between Saudi Arabia and Israel. We think it's hugely important, and we're going to work collectively with Israel to try to obtain that. Can it happen? I'm not sure. But that said, we are going to work very closely to try to see if we can achieve that, because it is a game changer. It is fundamentally uh, helps uh, the state of Israel, helps the region, helps the United States. So we're going to work 
uh, collectively to try to achieve that. All right. There are some reports of the administration perhaps appointing a, a special envoy to the region on the uh, work to work on the Abraham Accords. Some even suggesting one of your predecessors could be appointed to to that post. Is there anything you can tell us about that? No, I think. Listen, we're all focused on uh, the Abraham Accords. We're all focused on regional security. The White House is focused on this every day. Uh, the State Department is every day. Secretary Blinken is something he cares deeply about. And so uh, the good news is there's not a lack of interest. There is not a lack of interest among the White House and the State Department on the Abraham Accords and the security of the State of Israel. Uh, now, I mentioned uh, uh, the uh, rapprochement between Iran and Saudi Arabia. That was overseen by China, uh, which has been stepping up its uh, involvement in the region in many aspects. Uh, how much of a concern is that for the United States? Let's be clear. The, the relationship between the Saudis and the Iranians was about uh, the Houthis and the Yemen war. Uh, the, so we've, we, we're happy when uh, things are calm. If the Saudis can have uh, a, a, a cold peace with Iran during this period and calm the Yemenis situation down, I think that's great. And by the way, there is a, tr there is a truth, truce as we speak. So we're, we're very much in favor of anything that calms things down. Uh, the Chinese relationship, uh, that's another discussion for another time. But most importantly, I think it's important to understand this has no impact on the ability for the Saudis uh, to have a, a bilateral relationship with, with Israel. And the same day that they announced the uh, uh, Saudi-Iran uh, 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 the conversations, they also announced a $35 billion purchase of Boeing aircraft right. uh, for their new airline, the Saudi Air, uh, airline. So um, we think, again, calm is important. Right. On the terms of, again, the Saudis, the National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan recently there in Saudi Arabia reports of a possible a rail link uh, that would link uh, the Gulf and the Emirates uh, with Israel. Uh, through Saudi Arabia? Is there anything to could tell you about this project? Is that something that could develop even without full relations between Saudi Arabia? And Again, Israel? we're working every day to figure out how we uh, build ties uh, in the region. The more security between Saudi Arabia and Israel, Jordan, and Egypt, the Emiratis, Bahrain, Morocco is good for Israel, it's good for the region. So anything we can develop on economics and security is good, uh, is good for the region. All right. Now, uh, China has also been involved with Israel in uh, some serious investment here and some infrastructure projects. Uh, reports of the uh, of the U.S. of the administration being concerned to the extent of that, or how Israel handles that. Uh, uh, can you tell us anything about the discussions that perhaps you or other officials have had with Israel, with this government, on uh, Chinese involvement, especially in sensitive infrastructure projects? We worked at, we've been working with the Israelis since like day I got here about uh, their technology. Uh, exports. This is, this is a technology wonder here in Israel. Uh, they have lots of tools. We just want to make sure those tools uh, are getting into the right hands, uh, especially those tools that have dual use and dual use technologies. But the Israelis have been very open to having those conversations. They understand the importance to have clear checks and balances. So we'll work, keep working with the Israelis. Uh, but we don't want to do anything that tampers down the technology uh, uh, ecosystem here in Israel. Exceptionally important to the world, and exceptionally important to Israel. But you do all concerned. There have been some reports of Israeli technology used, being used by some unfriendly uh, actors in the world. Uh, is that how much of a concern is that to well, the? We talk, we talk to the Israelis all the time about that. We want to make sure that the the technology is is in the in the right hands for the right purposes. Uh, we not only talk to Israel about that, we talk to all of our allies and friends about that, and we're working with. And the good news is the Israelis understand it. Right. Now, getting back to U.S.-Israel relationship, uh, the administration came in saying they would judge this new government. The Netanyahu government uh, on its uh, words and actions, not on expectations, or certainly, especially some individuals involved in it. Uh, we've heard some of those individuals, like, for example, the National Security Minister Itamar Ben Vir or the Finance Minister Betzalel Smotrich, saying what some people say extremist statements. Uh, how concerned is the uh, administration over their role in the government? To be clear, uh, there's one prime minister. 
That is my interlocutor. I, my interlocutor is with Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu, who I probably spend many, many days a week uh, having conversations with him and his direct staff. So I'm confident, as he likes to say, he has the hands on the wheel, and that's who we deal with. All right. Now, you have uh, announced uh, uh, that you will be leaving this job uh, in the summer. I'd like to ask you about, uh, you, uh, by, uh, you seem quite happy here, and it seems Israel's quite happy to have you here, Mr. Ambassador. So Thank first, you. I want to ask you about why uh, you'll be, wh wh you, you know, why you are leaving the role, and what do you see? How do you sum up, in, I guess, in terms of your achievements here, and perhaps some of the things you would have liked to achieve? Here? Well, uh, well, first of all, you have to talk to my wife. Uh, okay, listen, my family's I'm back happy, in the States. We're happy to talk to you. So, so the, the prime minister said you talk to my okay. wife too. My wife, my, you know, my family and kids are in, uh, in Washington D.C. in New York. Uh, I've been away from them for almost two years. Um, I like my wife, and she sort of still likes me, and I definitely like my kids. So, you know, I think it's, it's time for me to, to make sure uh, she keeps uh, liking me. Uh, this job is fantastic. What an honor to be the American ambassador to our most important ally. It's a, it's a dream come true for me. It's something that I think um, uh, one can only imagine. I only wish my parents were alive to have seen me being sworn in uh, by President Herzog when I handed my credentials in uh, just, you know, uh, uh, two years ago. Uh, it's been a huge honor. And I think, you know, uh, you know, I'll let history or other people judge if I've been good or bad. I've tried to do my best. I work uh, collectively with everyone. One of the things I'm most proud of, I don't think there's a group of people that I either haven't met with or talked to. It doesn't matter if you're the, um, the left of the left or the Haredi community, or the settler community, or gay, or straight, or Druze, or Arabs, or Palestinians, I believe uh, we've got to be the ambassador to everyone. I don't necessarily have to agree with everyone, but I mean, need to talk to everyone. And so that's my, my and I think I've been successful in that, and I think I've achieved uh, that level of success. And the most important thing is to make sure this unbreakable bond between our two countries is only stronger on my watch. Right. You spoke a little about your Jew own Jewish identity. Uh, has that played in it? What did it mean to you to be the ambassador to the Jewish state? So listen, I, you know, I, I tell everyone, I'm a secular Jew. I'm a reformed Jew from Minnesota. I'm a, little, a Duluth Jewish kid. I was the eighth, I was the eighth child uh, of a family of eight. Uh, my parents, my father was the president of the temple, the head of the UJA. My mother was the head of Hadassah and sisterhood. I grew up as a cultural Jew, like many Jews here in Israel, okay? The idea when I came here at 15 years old and walked up Masada and slept in the Sinai Desert that I would be the American ambassador to Israel some 40 years later, no, I could never have dreamed of that. And obviously it's something that for me as a, as a Jew, as, you know, being a Jew for me is not, is, is about a way of life. It's not about necessarily that I'm, I certainly am not the most religious guy you've ever met, but I care about this place. I care about its security, its people, its democratic values. And then, you know, uh, how lucky can I be? Ambassador Thomas Knights, thank you for joining us on I-24 News. And thank you for joining us here in Israel. <laughs> thank you very much. Appreciate you.